You know, I should mention here, at a certain time. Uh, since you've used that term, chronotopology, that's the name of the discipline which you founded, which is the study of the structure of time. Well, uh, do you want me to comment on yes, that? Yes, please. Uh, in a way, yes, but in a way I didn't found it. Uh, I, w I was thinking cybernetics, for instance, was started formally by Norbert Wiener, but it began with the toilet tank that controlled itself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was talking with Wiener at Ravello, he happily agreed with this. The toilet and tank. And he says, oh yes, uh, the, the self-shutting off toilet tank oh. is the first cybernetic advance of mankind. I, and I suppose chronotopology has a, an illustrious beginning like oh, this also. Yeah. Oh, well, better than the toilet tank, uh -huh. actually. <laughs> it has a better <laughs> beginning than cybernetics. Does it, in, in effect, does it go back to the study of the ancient astrologers? Well, it goes back to the study of almost all traditional cultures. The, um, the word astronomia, even the word mathematicus, meant someone who studied the stars. Mm -hmm. And in Kepler's sense, they calculated the positions to know the qualities of time. But that's an independent hypothesis. The, uh, the uh, hypothesis of chronotopology is whether you have pointers uh, of any kind, ionospheric disturbances, planetary orbits, or whatnot. Independently of those pointers, time itself has a flux, has a wave motion. Mm -hmm. And the object being to surf on time. Now, you, when you talk about the wave motion of time, yes. I'm getting real interested and excited because in quantum physics, there is this notion of, of the underlying basis of the physical universe are these waves, even probability waves, non-physical, non-material waves, sort of. It's very, very astute everything. because these waves are standing waves. Actually, the wave particle uh, so-called paradox isn't that bad when you consider that a particle is a wave packet a packet of standing waves. Yeah. And that's why an electron can go through a plate and leave wave-like things. And actually our bodies are like fountains. The fountain has a shape only because it's being renewed every minute. And our bodies are being renewed. So we are standing waves. Uh -huh. We're no exception. And this deep structure of matter where we can say, you know, what we really are mm -hmm. in our bodies is not what we appear to be. Mm -hmm. You're saying the same thing is true about time. It's not quite what it appears to be. No, it, we're a part of this wave structure. And mm -hmm. matter and energy all occur in waves. And time is the master control. I will give you an illustration of that. If you take a moment of time, this moment cuts through the entire physical universe as we're talking. It holds yeah. all of space in itself, but one point of space doesn't hold all of time. That's, you know, its time is much bigger than space. That thought, it's sort of making me gasp <laughs> a, a second. All of physical space in each now is moment. Is contained in a point of time, uh -huh. which is a moment. Yeah. And of course, a line of time then is an occurrence. Mm -hmm. And a wave of time is a recurrence. And then if you get out from the circle of time, which Nietzsche saw, the eternal recurrence, if you break that, as we know we do, we develop. And then we're on a helix because we come around but it's a little different each time.